What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. The average income in America is what, $31,000 per person? Sounds and right. And the average home is over $400,000. So how are you gonna afford a home? So there's definitely a huge percentage of the homeless population is there because they have to be and they don't want to be at all. I wanted to do a homeless documentary in Maine because Maine is freezing, absolutely freezing. I went there in December. It was like six degrees out, ground was frozen. And I talked to someone that was there helping and they told me that the entire homeless shelter was empty and they can't get people to come into the homeless shelter because they don't want to wake up at a certain time and go to bed at a certain time. They don't want to follow any rules. So instead of following any rules, these people in Maine are sleeping on the frozen ground on crates and stuff to keep off the floor. And if we keep, that's the thing though, like everything comes back to economics, which is exactly what you're laying out. And you know, you, you ever seen the memes of like the boomers dancing in the retirement home and it says boomers when they spent 20 grand on a house and just sold it for 4 million mm -hmm. right so we started this inflationary path if you will years and years and years ago decades ago and it just keeps moving like that like a v and so ma everything's math like with it mathematically speaking you're going to have more and more people falling so far below the mendoza scale that they're going to suddenly turn to things like this because if there's one thing the the pandemic should have taught us as far as like about ourselves like our flaws we will adapt to shit quickly right mm -hmm. so people you know you might say to someone right now like oh could you imagine being homeless in 10 years and they'll be like oh my god no maybe 10 years from now they're in that situation i mean this guy seems like you said he's not strung out he's fairly normal he's living his life and like he almost seems slightly happy doing that yeah the other oh my god speaking of that guys if you'd like to join our patreon by hitting the link in the description below not only does it support our show and allow us to get great guests like this and put out more content but you're going to get exclusive access to the julian and alessi show which is the show we post only on patreon that's with my producer alessi aleman and i as well as some behind the scenes content and some extra content with guests so hit that link in the description below and i hope to see you over there um, on the west side of Oahu in Hawaii, there is oh, a, you did a video there. homeless encampment or house. They like to be called houseless. They think it's more respectful because like, this is my home. What I about the unhoused? Is that? Yeah, I don't, I don't buy into the, all the semantics like yeah. that. It just seems like you're policing my speech too much, but yeah. it's called, a. uh, and I'm it's definitely, like, it's like the fifth or sixth one, unless you just go uh, down, go yeah, down. Uh, one down, one on the left. Right there. Pu, it's like, uh, Pu oh, from the lush mountaintops to the I think the rundown beaches, before. Oh yeah. Yeah. Pause it. Yeah. yeah, so it's a homeless camp on the west side of Oahu, and over 200 people live there, over half of which work full time just to provide resources for the community. And there's about 30 or 40 children that live there that go to school. They have a pantry where the people of the community provide food so people can go eat there. They have school supplies. They have clothes for people that need it. And anyone can go and live there in Hawaii. And the, it's ran by a, a matriarch named Twinkle Borge, who's been living <laughs> there for over 25 years. And she could have left years ago, but she just wants to stay there and care for the people because the average house in Hawaii is 1.15 million. Oh, yeah. So let's say you were born in Hawaii and you Good don't want to, and you don't want to leave. What are you, I mean, what are you going to, you have to leave unless you're rich, you have to leave. Now there are worse places to be homeless, though. It's it's great, and I, I, and I, the reason I brought these people up is because they're all so happy. Yeah, they were all so happy, and I had such a good time with them. And I was like, "Dang, this is like really makes you rethink your perspective on homelessness because you think bums, you think losers. These people work full time, right, just to provide for their community, just to live in a tent. Because, I mean, man, if you if you're making, but it's a community. It's a community, and they stick together, and they got funding, and they are building a tiny home village right next to uh where this community is all right so i want to see this this is different i, I want to see this everyone views hawaii as a land of paradise but for many residents of the island things are getting dark hawaii has the third highest rate of homelessness in america and it appears things are only getting worse for years property costs have been skyrocketing in hawaii and on the island of oahu where our episode takes place today the median cost of a single family home rose from seven hundred and eighty nine thousand to 1.15 million in the last three years three years all homes sold in 2021 were purchased by people who don't even live on the island and they routinely we bid well above the listing price without ever seeing the property Bunch in person. Bunch of billionaires bu building Hawaii's bunkers. population declining every year <laughs> for the past five years. But for those who don't want to leave their homeland, how do you survive? Well, for many, homelessness is the only option. 
This is the wine I boat harbor in Hawaii. Over 200 people live in this makeshift village, including nearly 50 children. And over half of the people that live here work full time just to provide resources for the rest of the residents. I visited this tropical encampment on the west side of Oahu to experience Hawaii's housing crisis firsthand. <laughs> I love your graphics, dude. Yeah. Shout out to Tristius and Alex Rososa. All right, so I'm here with Twinkle Borge, um, leader of Poor Nuo Hawaii Night. Oh, this what is her. This encampment. Uh, this is one of the largest houseless encampment that is located on the leeward side of Oahu. Twinkle Borge came to the Waianae Boat Harbor in 2003 after having lost her home. And after years of living here, she began to be known as the leader of the area. She made it her mission to turn the village into a refuge where people could heal from financial disaster, addiction, depression, and any other health problem. She has built it up into what could possibly be the best example of a community-run houseless village. And like any good community, there are rules. Um, no stealing, respect your neighbors, no noise after 10, security comes on at 10. Each person do have their own fire, hide, uh, fire extinguishers. We do have our own safety systems here. The mm. rules come with a three strike policy. And if anyone is found to have violated them three times, they are evicted from the community permanently. It's Ooh. important to maintain a safe and peaceful environment, especially for the children that live there. I remember when this place only had seven people. Now I have 175. Yeah, with that 175, I also have kids from newborn to 17. Mm. Have you, have you guys wish, what would it be? Yeah, pause that last have you guys ever heard of a, anything like that? No. It's fascinating, right? Like, it's yeah, we're we're going to talk about this. This is this is really This is one of my mom and dad's like favorite episodes I've ever done. Yeah, I I I have not seen this video, but when we're off camera, I'm definitely going to be watching this entire thing, but I want to see a little bit more. Everybody to be on home, especially the kids. Um I will do anything and whatever I need to do um to make sure these kids are well taken care of. The growing children of the village have unlimited access to the community pantry, as well as the donation tent. Mm. They have a storage area for books, a clothing area organized by size, and the pantry has its own food, dishes, hygiene items, and set of rules. No stealing, no selling of any donations. Residents are allowed to come in once a week. If anyone is caught selling any donations, they will be banned for good. Always appreciate everything you have. Pretty mm. good rules right there. Are these donation bags that are being made? Yeah, these are actually hygiene bags. Hygiene bags. Yeah. Wait, you got toothbrush, toothpaste, toilet paper, mask, COVID test, um, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, pretty much everything you need. What do you think the biggest misconception about homelessness in Hawaii is? People don't understand us. They automatically judge you because of how you live. And that's wrong. Mm -hmm. There are some that, you know, choose to be that way, but there are others that actually are working hard and try to make ends meet and still can't do it. Next, we got an inside look into Twitter. All right, let's pause as it. Well as people, you're going to have to go watch the full video on the channel. Wh what was your takeaway? From this after you left there did you view this as a problem or an actual interesting solution or neither i think this is uh the most viable solution to homelessness that i've ever encountered um not necessarily the the tent situation that they have set up that is like very good but the they have funding now to actually have a tiny home village if you can you scroll to the end of of, of the video i think there's like a a graphic uh, that shows I like promoted their GoFundMe, um, but yeah. The link to their GoFundMe. Thank you. Right. Yeah, go ahead. So they've acquired however many acres of, of land, and they are going to actually build like cheap, affordable homes for all these people to continue this community that they've built up now, just you know, in better homes. And I don't know if that's possible all around America because this seems like a bit of a, a rare thing. Like I think Twinkle's an incredible person that set this up, but I mean seems like one of the best solutions that I've came across. I know they tried to set up tiny home communities in California and like the governments came like bulldozed them. I've heard of, of that happening. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.